in this next section we're going to look at integration as it applies to NMR spectroscopy and what you want to keep in mind is that with integration the area under the signal is proportional to the number of protons that that signal corresponds to so for example if you have chloroethane we have two different types of protons we have the CH3 group and the CH2 group we'll have one signal that integrates for three hydrogen we'll have another signal that integrates for two hydrogen so you would expect this signal that integrates for three hydrogen to have a larger peak area which in fact it does and that's what we're going to see in this section just to look at a couple of examples here first we have this ketone compound and we have three different or three different types of hydrogen we have a methyl group so that would give us an integration corresponding to three hydrogen we have the CH2 group which will give us an integration corresponding to two hydrogen and another CH3 group which would give us an integration corresponding to three hydrogen now if we take a look at the spectrum you can see that we have our CH2 our CH3 signal and another CH3 signal now in this case you see we have these integral symbols on the spectrum and these actually represent the area under the curve for that particular signal and we will talk about those a little bit later on but you can see how each of these signals corresponds to the number of hydrogen that it represents next we have this symmetric ether so what's going to happen here we have equivalent CH3 groups on both sides so that's going to give one signal and we have equivalent CH2 groups so our integration here is going to be for a total of four hydrogen and for these methyls since they are equivalent we're going to get an integration for six hydrogen and that is in fact what we have in this spectrum So keeping in mind that the area under the NMR signal is proportional to the number of protons that it corresponds to, we'll look at some different cases as to how your spectrum may be presented. So the first is the simplest case where the integration values that you're given accurately represent the number of hydrogen that that signal corresponds to. So here you can see we have three different types of hydrogen, the one in green, the one in red, and the one in blue, and they correspond to this compound on the right. And the integration values given at the top of each peak, and it does accurately represent the number of hydrogen that corresponds to. So this first signal corresponds to one hydrogen, and we have one hydrogen there. Our second signal corresponds to two hydrogen, and that's a CH2 group. And our third signal corresponds to three hydrogen, and that's the methyl group. So this is the simplest case. The second case is where you are given whole number integration values, but they don't represent enough total hydrogen. So even if you didn't know we had this structure on the left, if you have the formula C6H12O, you know that 12 hydrogen should be represented in your NMR spectrum. But we're given integration values of 1 hydrogen and 3 hydrogen. That's only a total of 4 hydrogen represented in this spectrum. So what you need to do is multiply both of these by the same number in order to get the total number of hydrogen. So what we need to do is multiply both of these by 3. So 1 hydrogen times 3, that 
means this signal represents 3 hydrogen. 3 hydrogen times 3, this signal represents 9 hydrogen. Now we have 9 plus 3, which is our total 12 hydrogen. So because we're just dealing with peak areas, you're not necessarily going to be given the exact number of hydrogen. You have to do a little bit of problem solving to figure out how many it represents. Sometimes it's just uh, the lowest ratio. The next case is where you may be given integration values where one or more are values less than one. So what you need to do here is find your lowest integration value. In this case, it's 0.153, and divide all of these numbers by that. So this is going to be our base, and we'll divide this one by 0 0.153 to get that to 1. Okay, next we can divide 0 0.230 divided by 0.153. And that's going to give us a value of 1.5. And then we can do 0 0.230 again divided by 0 0.153. And again, we get 1.5. Now, we can't have an integration for 1.5 hydrogen. So that must mean that these values do all need multiplied by some number. We need 8 total hydrogen. So in order to get the correct values, we need to multiply all of these by 2. If we do that, our first signal, 1 times 2, that's going to represent 2 hydrogen. Our second signal, 1.5 times 2, represents 3 hydrogen. Our third signal, 1.5 times 2, also represents 3 hydrogen. So now, we've come up with 3 hydrogen, plus 3 hydrogen, plus 2 hydrogen. That gives us our 8 hydrogen that we were looking for. Okay, now a similar case could be where your values are very large numbers. Okay, you're going to work these out the same way to figure out how many hydrogen each signal corresponds to, and you're going to do it by dividing all signals by the lowest number. In this case, it's 1475, so that's going to be our base. Divide that by 1475 to give us our base value of 1. Okay, next we can divide the 2950 divided by 1475. And that is going to give us 2. 4430 divided by 1475. That gives us 3. And 8840 divided by 1475 gives us about 6. And these values may not come out exactly, but if they're close to a whole number, um, that's going to be your integration value. So now, we do have integration numbers for each of these signals. You can say 2 hydrogen, 1 hydrogen, 3 hydrogen, and 6 hydrogen. And if we add these up, we have 6 plus 3 plus 1, plus 2, that gives us our 12 hydrogen, so we don't need to do any more work. We know how many hydrogen each of these signals corresponds to. And here's our structure below. Um, we have our methyl group, which is 3 hydrogen, which represents this signal. We have our CH2, which is that signal. We have our CH, which is right here around 2. And then finally, our two equivalent methyl groups, which shows up as a doublet, since they're both methyls, 
3 plus 3 is 6, and that's why we get an integration here for 6 hydrogen. Now our fifth case, although this is becoming less and less common with newer instruments, you may be given these integral curves drawn on the spectrum, and yet you might not have any type of integration values given. But using these curves and the height, we can figure out um, how many protons each of these signals corresponds to. So you can do it visually. In this case, if we set this integral, the space between the top and the bottom, so the height of that, if we set that equal to 1, our next integral over has the same height, so we'll set that one equal to 1. And then this final integral is a bit taller. This looks to be about 1.5. Now again, we can't have 1.5 hydrogen, so we need to multiply all of these by 2. So we'll get a 2 hydrogen integration, a 2 hydrogen integration, and a 3 hydrogen integration, and that gives us our 7 hydrogen. Now in this case, we just sort of eyeballed it, but we can be a little more exact with this and actually measure the height of each of these integrals. So what you want to do here, you can actually take out a ruler and measure each one. This first one has a height of about 40 millimeters. Okay, our next integral over has the same height of about 40 millimeters. And our final integral, if we measure that, it has a height of 60 millimeters. So we can use these peak heights as our area values and figure out the ratio. So in this case, we're going to have a peak ratio of 1 to 1 to 1 1.5. And you can do that by dividing each of those numbers by 40. And then to get the total number of hydrogen, we do need to multiply these values by 2 and we'll get a peak ratio of 2 to 2 to 3. And that gives us our integrations for each of those signals. One final case, which really isn't much different, instead of having individual integrals, you can be given these uh, step integrals where they sort of add on one another with a stepwise pattern. But again, all we're doing is uh, measuring the distance, and if we take our smallest integral distance here, we'll set this value to 1. So let's make this the uh, signal under this peak representing 1 hydrogen. The distance here looks to be about double that, so we're going to say that this signal corresponds to 2 hydrogen. The distance of this one is the same as the distance of this first one. So since that height is the same, this one is also going to integrate for 2 hydrogen. And then, again, you can measure this distance here. What you're going to find is it's going to be six times the height of this one that we set as one. So we're going to make this peak six hydrogen. And you can see the compound that it corresponds to, and you can match these up. So that's six hydrogen are these two equivalent methyl groups.